Are your crochet hooks going to get taken by TSA? Let's talk about it. Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarning podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SEK Handmade, answer your yarning questions. I'm so glad you are here. I would love it if you would like this video, subscribe, leave a comment about something we talk about here today, maybe your own traveling experience, and even share this with a friend. Today I'm wearing my brand new Asbury shawl. I am so excited about this summer shawl. It is getting warm here, and so I am ready to have the perfect summer accessory. I, of course, have had mine done for a while, but you know my rule, I don't get to wear it until it has been published. So here we go, I'm so excited. I'm just wrapping it loosely around today because it's still cool this morning, but it's gonna get warmer as the day goes on. We could get some thunderstorms tonight, which usually means big heat and storms. So we shall see. Links to the pattern, the introduction video, and the link below. This version is in conjunction with Malabrigo. This is their Machita yarn, and I use the colorway piano. So all of that will be in the links below. Definitely go check out the introduction video, though, because I made another sample, and it is stunning. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> All right, we're gonna mix things up a little bit this summer and start by diving right into questions. So if you would love to ask a question, I would love to answer it. There is a link in the show notes below under the description. It's super simple, just click the box. It'll take you to a form, drop your question in there, and then I can answer it on a later podcast. So as I hinted at the very top, here's our question for today. I'm flying for the first time in a long time, and I'm really nervous about my crochet hooks getting taken. Can I fly with crochet hooks? How can I prevent my hooks from getting taken? That is a great question and something that I think especially a lot of people who either don't travel regularly by airplane or who are brand new to the craft and have never taken their crochet along with them wonder before they get on an airplane. So the thing is, I'm going to talk about the United States because that is where I am from and my personal experience with TSA because that's what I know. So what are the official TSA rules? Let's take a look at the TSA's website. So the first thing you're going to do is navigate to tsa.gov. Then if you travel over to the right side of the screen, it says, what can I bring? You're going to click on that and it's gonna give you a whole list of what you can bring. You can either scroll through the list, it's all alphabetical, or you can search exactly what you're looking for right here. Another way to get to the crafty questions is to scroll down to these choices down here and click on sharp objects. <laughs> Once you're there, you can go ahead and scroll down to where it says crochet hooks. As you can see, they're okay for carry on and checked baggage, but it does say that they need to be protected so that we don't end up hurting the people checking baggage. That goes the exact same for knitting needles, but I'm gonna click down to the last page and look at scissors. And we need to keep in mind, they need to be less than four inches from their pivot point and then they're okay to take. So those are the official rules. People think about crochet hooks and knitting needles getting taken away. So even though knitting needles and crochet hooks are listed under the sharp objects, we all know that they're not really that sharp and that even your pointiest crochet hook isn't really a danger. And most TSA agents understand that as well. I think the main concern are scissors. The rules say that you can bring scissors, but you are limited to the size of scissors. The official rule is that it needs to be less than four inches from the pivot point to the tip. Now, I don't know about you, but even my largest craft scissors are nowhere near four inches from the pivot point to the tip. However, if you look at these guys, oh man, are they sharp. And if anything in my crafting supplies looks like a weapon, I think this is gonna be it. So I don't take these with me when I fly. So what do I take? I would either take a small pair of scissors with a more rounded tip on them. Even some of my more pointy tips are not quite that sharp. And so I would pick one with a more rounded end to it so it looks less threatening. Also, I think the smaller the better. But a great way to avoid carrying scissors at all is to carry one of these guys. 
This is a cutting tool. There is a blade inside of it, and you can use this to cut your yarn without having scissors at all. I think since this looks so non-threatening, almost like a pendant or a locket, you're way less likely to both draw attention to yourself and have this taken away. So the official rules are that knitting needles, crochet hooks, and scissors that are less than four inches from the pivot point are all approved to go in both your checks and your carry-on baggage. But do crochet hooks still get taken? The answer is yes. It is really up to the TSA agent in charge to make these kinds of judgment calls, and we want them to have this freedom to keep us safe to the best of their ability. But I think packing smart can help you avoid getting your crochet hooks or knitting needles taken away. So how do you pack wisely? Number one, I'd say pack one of these guys instead of a pair of scissors. I think the main goal is to not draw attention to your luggage in any way. So make sure you're following all of the liquid rules and other rules about what you can and can't bring with you on the airplane to a T and hopefully it'll just glide right through. If you have other suspicious things, your bag is a lot more likely to be checked and they may feel like they need to remove more than just whatever caught their eye. The other thing I think is important about packing smart is making sure that you are prepared to have your tools taken away. While I have heard of people having knitting needles and crochet hooks taken away from them, I have never heard of anybody having their actual project taken away. So what does it mean to be prepared to have your hook taken away? It means that you should have your live loop on a stitch marker instead of stuck through your crochet hook so that your project won't unravel if that crochet hook gets taken away or if your project gets moved around and touched by the TSA agents. If you're working a Tunisian crochet project or a knitting project, I highly recommend going ahead and working on an interchangeable set. That way you can go ahead and take stoppers and put stoppers on each end of your project to hold all of your loops in place so that you don't have to worry that if that hook or your interchangeable needles get taken, you still have your project secure. And is it a bummer? Absolutely but your whole project won't unravel or you won't be picking up stitches from a knitting sweater or something crazy like that because you had to pull your whole needle out of it. So what do you do if you are pulled aside and they search your bag? Number one, number one top, be calm, be respectful. You are not going to help the situation by getting angry or frustrated. If they want to take your hook and you know it's against the rules, as I said before, they have a right to go ahead and take that. And you yelling at them about it is definitely not gonna help. So I would say be aware of your surroundings and the current situation that you're in. If TSA is not super busy and everybody seems pretty chill, I think we've all had times where we've been through TSA and the agents are chatty and happy and friendly. And then we've been through TSA other times where they all look incredibly stressed and like they haven't gotten a good night's sleep in a year and a half. Depending on who you're working with may depend on how flexible they are. So if you get pulled aside at a time that you have the time, you're not rushing to your plane, but you have the time to calmly and respectfully talk to someone who seems like they will be receptive of hearing your concerns, Go ahead and just say to them, hey, I looked all this up ahead of time. It said that crochet hooks were allowed. Can we talk about this? They may say yes, they may say no, but I think it's worth a try. On the other hand, if things are crazy hectic and everybody seems like a total grump, you trying to talk to the TSA agent may not help at all other than to make people mad. So unfortunately, you might lose your hook, you might lose a pair of scissors, but Hopefully your project will be intact and those things can be replaced. I personally have never had my crochet hooks taken away or my knitting needles or really even questioned, but I know that people have. Sometimes people have told me that they have been asked to prove that they can knit or crochet. So you also want to be prepared to be able to work a few stitches. They can be simple stitches. You don't have to work your huge complicated project or a whole round of your sweater, but you may be asked to demonstrate just so that you're proving that you're bringing those along because yes, indeed you do that crap. 
I have not done a lot of international travel, but I have heard that that tends to be what hangs people up the most. As Americans, we look at TSA's rules and then travel and don't think necessarily about what other countries' rules might be. The thing is, when you're coming home, you have to travel through that country's security and their rules then apply. So if you're traveling to a different country, I would definitely, before you go and choose to take anything, look at their rules to make sure that you're following those to lessen your chances of your tools getting taken. Generally speaking, I've had really good experiences and I hope you do too. Try not to be stressed about this. I will confess I'm equal parts stressed about having the things with me and them getting taken and having them in my bag and my bag getting lost. I think when it comes to flying, there's no way to really know what is going to happen. To me, that is the most stressful part of flying that I don't have control and I don't know what's gonna happen. So I think we just need to take some deep breaths, do our best to follow the rules and then let the stress go as much as possible. I hope you found that really helpful. I'd love to know what your experiences are flying with knitting needles and crochet hooks. Be sure to leave a comment and share your experience so other people can learn from those too. If you have any questions about traveling with your yarn, I'd love to answer them. Again, the place to do that is in the description box below. Click the link, ask your question, and we'll talk about it. All right, let's share some small businesses that I love. Today, I have my cheeky ceramics sheep mug. I love this guy. He makes me happy. I use him all the time. Look at those adorable little sheep. Rin is a local artist here in Appleton and they are wonderful. They have lots of really fun designs so be sure to check them out. I have a pair of earrings on from another artist that I got to meet in person. These are Burly Babe earrings and they're all hand painted and made. They are absolutely gorgeous. She has so many fun shapes and sizes. They're really lightweight and comfortable to wear. I really love them. All right, let's wrap up with a couple announcements and I have some progress on a project. Yay! <laughs> all right, it is June. Who else had June sneak up on them? Oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. We are rolling right in to our summer whip wrap up. We have two groups going, one on Discord and one in my Facebook group. Links below to join those. People are already wrapping up whips. You do not need to feel embarrassed about joining those groups. We have one friend who has one. No, we have lots of friends who have lots of whips, including me. So join us. We're going to wrap some stuff up. We're going to encourage each other and there are prizes. You guys, I'm so excited about these prizes. So I have five prizes. The first one is going to be a sticker pack from yours truly. I've gathered some fun crochet stickers over my, you know, purchasing and whatnot. And so I'm going to send those out as a prize. Bonnie of Woodland Stitchcraft, you know I love her. She has some amazing printables. She has offered two of her printables. She has an awesome measurement guide that takes you through the process of how to best measure your body so that you can have your garments fit correctly. And then she also has a sheet for you to list all your measurements so that when you're ready to do your garment, you're good to go. Her second printable is the stinking cutest thing I have ever seen. She has a yarn tracker and you print these pages off and then every time you use up a skein of yarn, you color in your yarn tracker and you guys, it is so cute and what a great way to keep track of how many skeins of yarn you use without having to keep anything around once you're done. You just write it in your little journal and you're good to go. Those are both printables and so those will be prizes that will be available to absolutely anyone who participates in Whip Wrap Up. The third prize is two skeins of Sweet Georgia yarn. I have these stunning orange skeins in my stash and I keep looking at them and thinking, I'll use those one day, but it has been years and orange is not usually my jam. So I'm passing them on to someone else who will hopefully love them and turn them into something amazing because they deserve that. So that's prize number three. Prize number four is a gift card for $50 to an awesome yarn dyer, Nikki of Avery Lane Creations. She has the most gorgeous saturated colors. I know you are going to love her yarn and you'll get to shop 
or whatever you want. The very last prize is a little gift bag, goodie bag that I've put together. I bought a gorgeous floral bag and it's great not only for putting projects in, but you could put project bags in it to take it with you. So hopefully it'll be a great summer staple for you to travel your yarn with. And then I also have a skein of, I wanna get this right, a skein of hand dyed yarn from the Speckled Finch. And then I have two limited edition stitch markers from Toy Sheared Sheep that I'm gonna pass along in, along in that gift bag. <laughs> Super easy to join in. Points towards prizes are earned by finishing up whips. Whether you finish up one or you finish up 50, those are gonna be entries in to win. And it's just gonna be a good time. We've got a great community of people joining together to really encourage each other, which is super fun and really satisfying to finish up those whips. All right, so I'm gonna share with you my first whip that I'm gonna try so hard to finish up. You know I, um, started, I started, I made my Ventanitas top for a class that I'm teaching at my local yarn shop. And so I haven't gotten to wear it yet, but I had another crochet top that I'm just like free, free handing, free designing. I don't know, just for fun, just a nice boxy top to wear for the summer. And I was like, I need to finish that up because I'm going to love that and wear it all the time. So I have my first panel done and I'm super excited about that because it had been lingering for a long time. And then I have my second panel started. So what I'm gonna do, I think, like I said, I'm just freehanding this so we'll see how it turns out. I'm gonna make two identical panels and then I'm gonna make like a wedge of fabric in the shoulder, that's what that's called, in the shoulder to kind of make it a little more, um, fitted around my neck. So is that going to work? I don't know. We're going to give it a try. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your whips as much as I'm enjoying my whips. And I'd love for you to join us for whip wrap up. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you right back here next week. Have an awesome week and happy crafting.